Nice. Well, welcome everyone for this um, October 14th edition of the Rochester Select Board meetings. And um, before we start, I'd like to confirm that we posted the agenda in three public places, right, and on the website, and emailed to interested parties. So we can indeed go forth and right on time. Welcome. Um, before we start, does anyone have any additions to the agenda? Harlan's got an addition to the agenda. 30 years of missing select board. Yeah. Um, Just 30. That's because you said we also need to discuss the uh, yeah, I think we should let people know what we're doing. I have a discussion. Anybody else have anything else want to add other than our not that full agenda? So then we'll go forward with the minutes from the last meeting of September 23rd, and I would move to accept those as presented. Let's see how many changes. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. Got those. And um, Marvin, you're the last one in, so you're the first one to go. <laughs> what do you well, want to talk about? Here? That, that is a privilege. Uh, I appreciate it. Yeah. The, uh, I want to co comment the fact that we're getting some telephone lines moved apparently up 100, north on 100. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a pole that's been laying in front of, uh, across the road from Skipmark, uh, about eight feet long, and I don't have no idea why it's laying there, but I'll try to pick it up sometime if nobody minds, and so forth. With some help. Huh? Not by yourself. Pardon me? Not by yourself. Oh, yeah. Okay. It, it, yeah, I've already tested it. <laughs> but anyway, my subject is about the Marshbrook Road, which I live on, and uh, most everybody probably knows that. And uh, it is uh, actually uh, 2.6 miles, uh, 2.06 miles, and Barbary own approximately one third of a mile of that road. And uh, but the town has 49 and a half feet to maintain it. And I'm sorry, I intended to have you have a copy and. You need one because I read fast and sometimes I don't pronounce my words right. And uh, I'd like to see yeah. have you, you got it. Have you uh, thank you. Thank you. I should have one. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Thank you. You got an extra. <laughs> Thank you, sir. But at a select board meeting, uh, in, uh, when the bids were opened in August of, uh, of this year, 2019, the award was granted. This board announced that if anyone and on any of the roads uh, uh, to be mowed had areas that they wished not to be mowed, to please mark those areas. I assume that the same thing would be true to have more land mode at a homeowner's, uh, landowner's uh, request. I went to Mike Kepton before they started mowing and to ask him that more land off, that uh, more land be mowed on the east side of the road that had been. He told me to show the operator when he was there. Well, I told him I would do that. Uh, well, they moved, they mowed my road one day when I was gone, and they only mowed the grass side between the travel portion and the ditch, about two feet wide, uh, and which stopped the storm water from reaching the ditch anyway. I then went to Mike the next day and told him about the issue and responded that he had just learned that his men had a marked road map that Marshbrook Road was to be mowed only one pass. Now, anybody that knows Marshbrook Road, about half of it doesn't need any mowing. And on my third of a mile, there's one side of the road that has been pastured, and none of that needs to be mowed because the, the cows have done a very good job. And the, the fence is right out at the travel portion. Uh, and uh, no grass at all. The road was scheduled to have, to, to, to have part of this, this, to be discontinued by two different select boards, one of which I was on, it was decided to repair rather than abandon that road, a part of that road. 
So after the roadside mourning was completed, I asked Mike if he would send his man back and work for me without getting permission from the road commissioners, and that I would make sure that he got paid. The operative Dave, I don't know his last name, uh, came with Mike's equipment and did a good job under my direction, and I was supposed to have a bill already by tonight, but I don't have it, which I apologize for. And we are attempting to be good stewards of our environment, and this is part of it. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. We've got it all in front of you. All right. And Mason, you had something you wanted to speak about. You want to step out from behind the sure, camera? And sure, sure. Or do you want to do your, your minute approval first? We did that already. Oh, you did that? Yeah, okay. so I'm just the camera. Just... Yeah. Um, last meeting, I proposed that this meeting, that we have a discussion about our town moving forward on a climate emergency declaration. Now, other communities in Vermont have done this, and I would think that the Vermont League of Cities and Towns could be advising the select board on different formats of what this can look like. And what could this mean for our community? Well, it helps to give us forward directions in how we, as a community, move forward with how we look at our infrastructures. And this also may relate to potential grants. Something to consider here is uh, showing the direction in that way. Now, I had talked about having a special meeting in mid-November. Possibly it's better to wait till mid-December because we probably should think real hard about how to include the voters, all the voters, to be able to have a voice in this. And that can be done with Australian Valley, for, but it also can include an email vote for some people. We know that many of our younger folks are working to, you know, three jobs, as, as much as a, a lot of us are working three jobs or four. But giving a better opportunity, and what would that mean? Well, our Rochester uh, Civil Authority, uh, it would probably be good for them to next select board meeting come and talk about that issue. How can we make it possible for more participation on a boat like this uh, to be inclusive with email? Um, so this was supposed to be an evening of discussion about that. I'm hoping that since I brought it up to a meeting ago, that the select board has some feelings and possibly done a little homework on the subject and can share that with us. You would do the whole thing on this. Yeah, I think this Not would us. be a good good ball for you to pick up and run with since hey. you're inspired to do it. Yeah. I did some homework on the subject. Can I uh, let you know what I found? There is a, uh, a group called DCAN, the uh, Vermont Energy and Climate Action Guide. And VCAN has a Google site, a couple down when you look up things with a, a very nice insight into uh, community energy and climate action committees. So uh, if uh, we need some resources, that's a great place to start. It seems like uh, you'll need a handful of people to form a committee. And if there's anywhere that we can work with other uh, groups already uh, working like um, Envision Vermont or Envision Rochester, perhaps they would help uh, organize meeting times and places. But there's a fantastic resource called VCAN, V-E-C-A-N, Vermont Energy and Climate Action Committees, and so uh, that's the homework. VLCT is definitely a resource. There's some issues are going to be worked out and uh, legislated like in next July is it that the solid waste will no longer take food scraps which is um, I guess I understand a significant amount of the methane producing it's a significant amount of what goes into a landfill and does a lot of the methane so that's that is a step that is 
going to be coming at us regardless of what we do. Um, we we'll have to figure out how to respond to that as a town and individually. I assume that our um, the recycling and, and the waste um, you know haulers will be offering you know the option to take care of, of compostables. They're not expecting everyone to have a compost pile outside their kitchen window. But um, that's that's on the horizon. One of the little bits of homework I did around this. Um, I was just Mark. gonna say, um, Able Waste Management has been taking the compost for about a year now. All right. So um, they, they have an arrangement. You you pay four dollars for a bag, and then you bring it back. And if you want another bag, you pay. Anyway, so I just yeah. put it in a plastic bucket with a tight lid in my kitchen. Yeah. It, so they do offer that already. I'll and I scraps. believe, isn't there? I mean, there's. When does that composting law go into effect? Next July. Okay. Yeah. But you can put chicken bones in with the regular. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Legally, you can. <laughs> Illegally, you can. Yeah. But um, this funny little bit there, I guess they don't want. Keeps the dogs out of it. Keeps the dogs out of the compost. <laughs> They're not supposed to have chicken bones. Yeah. So, well, because the bone doesn't really. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, your feeling about this is more immediate. Um, it's not something that you feel you want to bring to town meeting in March. That's a possibility, but I'd like to next meeting continue the talk. I'm not okay. sure. I, I think it's better that more folks have the opportunity to even know that the select boards and the meetings are talking about this mm -hmm. uh, because it's very difficult. Uh, and it, hopefully, our official newspaper can definitely bring this forth that you know this is going to take more community participation and the issue around. The voting, I think, is a good one. It also gives us an opportunity to look forward uh, about how to be more, uh, get people more invo uh, involved in voting by let's let's have the civil authority, the Rochester civil authority, come and actually think how difficult is it to actually look at uh, having email voting. You know, this we have 800 voters. Let's say, you know, 10 percent might email. The others, you know, I mean, usually what, what's our usual voter turnout? 40%? Uh, so if we have X amount of emails that we have to certify, we pick up the phone and we talk to the person. You know, it can be, it can be verified. It's not a massive problem uh, in the situation of, uh, you know, L.A. Does the yeah. process start with a petition? I don't think it has to. I think we uh, should invite the civil authority here and get some feedback from okay. them. Just in case those questions come up, I want it to be recorded. Yeah, yeah it should be here at the meetings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so possibly this next meeting, maybe we can have the civil so authority. So it sounds here. like it's beyond the, the topic you brought up was about the. Um, climate emergency, but it sounds like the topic you're really talking about is email voting, right? No, I'm talking about yep. participation on mm -hmm. the subject of have the climate emergency declaration that it actually that the community really thinks about it and shares a, a, a healthy vote on it. So because something of this nature has a way of helping to have guidance in which directions we move in the future. What would they be voting on? Well, that's what we're talking about right now. Well, do you have some something uh, to well, show? Right here, we have. No we, we there is one. a model town meeting day resolution, and sure. so there's a one page uh, of that available as a resource, and we could uh, vote to ratify the uh, resolution uh, to uh, for everyone to know that climate change threatens the health of our forests. Etc. Etc. So there's a boilerplate resolution that we would be able to uh, sign for. Would you like that read at this meeting or the next? Any? Nope. <laughs> no takers. I think. Yeah, it's a page. What's Mason, that? I think one of the issues you're looking for is to activate more community involvement, right? Uh, in, on a vote. In vote. Well. Is is a vote important, or is it just uh, a, uh, a, a a symbol? Yeah, I mean, a vote is uh, you know a vote's one thing, but actually having people out there doing stuff is more important. 
Well, they go hand in hand. I agree. They go hand in hand. Yeah. Well, we can vote the resolution, and if it's important enough, you can decide if we need a resolution to form a committee. But um, if you think it's important enough that we, you, we can attract a committee of a half dozen or less to further investigate things we can do, there's a model of easily available. And that was a town meeting type, you know, non-binding resolution that the town can choose to, to yeah. vote for. Adopt, this know. resource includes yeah. some of the bylaws of other communities. You can look up what the Norwich town has done, also bigger towns of Brattleboro and Bennington. Everything may not mesh with our town size, but so the, the it's question a good is, resource. There's voting to adopt a resolution where it's like, okay, we checked that off the list that done, or there's an ongoing conversation, and it sounds like you're more interested, and it makes more sense, more is going to happen coming out of ongoing conversation and yes uh, voting for a resolution if the town is educated and and stands behind that is is a symbolic thing whether that will enable us to get grants that I don't know I don't, have you they, done uh, some research on this or there's two pages of grants available also there are grants available. Um, right. Henley, is that from the Vermont climate energy action website that you mentioned before um it is okay. all of that's related to VECAN Okay, uh, thank you. Energy and Climate uh, Action Network. Uh, I also yeah, Vermont Energy and Climate Action Network, formed in July of 17. Lots of contacts, board members. And, uh, so back to office. the original request, you're requesting to have a special town meeting with this as the topic. Correct. 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 Uh, and about associated to that special town meeting. Well, prior to that is ongoing discussion to get there, which would be the adoption of whatever uh, plan the select board felt was appropriate to put forth for a vote. Can we suggest that you propose the library get involved in any of that discussion? I, I'm totally, oh, I'm totally open to any direction. What I'm, I'm looking at is that we figure it out in the month, uh, in these meetings ahead and be able to communicate through our official newspaper and wherever else mm -hmm. to inform the voters, but at the same time, offering them an opportunity to vote, which could be new and exciting for our voters. Right, the participation in, in a lot of the subject matters that we've had at the library have been very successful. Lots, lots of good turnout. Uh, how was Bill? Stepping my bounds, Tony. Uh, oh, that's right. <laughs> Are we, we going to get a report on Bill McKibben the other night? I had to miss it. <laughs> was there a good turnout? Yes, there was. Good. And, uh, it was a good, uh, good discussion. Well, it's, it sounds to me like a, a, a vote on something like this is most appropriate at the town meeting where we're going to have the largest um, turnout of voters whether they're physically or through Orca Media and um, the, um, the discussion leading up to that point. But a vote before then seems like it's um, premature and that actually the, if the, the real goal here is to educate and to generate discussion and awareness that, that um, you know, perhaps you could you know, give us a little presentation each meeting coming up, and if we want to have a, a if you want to propose a, a special town meeting to discuss it, I think that's we could do that, but and probably tacked on to. It seems to me that it's more um, than the agenda on the select board meetings, and the real special meeting is is the town meeting where the town takes a stand on on bigger things like that. I guess you can petition mm -hmm. to have a special town meeting if you if you. Oh, care you to know do the, so. the annual town meeting is not that far away. No, it's not. It's Correct. not. But it's uh, not in December, and it's right. not next month. Uh, yeah. But the process of the town, the select board, involved in the decoration is an important factor. So next select board meeting, it would be good to continue the subject. And we know. Because there's going to be at about six select board meetings before the annual meeting, something like that. Could be a little more. Maybe a little more. Yeah. 
not to me. So I, it'd be great to have it on the agenda for next <coughs> like we're meeting and, mm -hmm. and uh, possibly by then not only yourselves having a little more idea of what's going on with this th that a few people can get together and start to uh, <coughs> look at this a little bit more. So are you volunteering to bring some information to the table? Uh, I, I, <coughs> Am I volunteering? Yes, I am volunteering. Okay. Good. And you're also volunteering to do some homework yourself. No, um, you're no. suggesting. <laughs> no, I'm suggesting you guys you need to also know, know what your opinions are. Yourself, but no. It's yeah. good yeah. to know what your yeah. opinions are in this uh, process. You, you <laughs> do like to encourage other people to yes. do things. And I think well, it would be great I, I to match said, that energy with presenting some information other than just That's a not a problem. Idea. We have it right here, right now. Yeah, we can we actually do, do it's, read it's it right now. It's great. It's, it's so not that. More. Bring more. That'd be great. That's Thank right. you. I'd like to know that you yeah. also are aware of it. You know, like for example, in your situation, you can have a conversation with the Vermont leagues of cities and towns and see what their suggestions are for the town. We are, we do pay dues to this organization, yeah. and that's what they're there for. Yeah. And so, you're the ones okay. that can relate to them, not me. All right. So it'd be nice to have some feedback from you guys also, besides the public bringing information. You know, it's a cooperative type of thing. Right, is that it for now? Sure. All right, thank you. Um, actually, that's, um, I guess it ties into that, the issue of climate change, because it was perhaps an effective climate change that took out um, Bethel Mountain Road in spring. <laughs> and that would um, segue right into Joan's update, which is predominantly about the, um, the um, completion of that project, miraculously six months to the day. She's not here, Patty. Do you feel like <laughs> presenting what she uh, brought us to the meeting since you've been the PR person on sure. this job? Sure. You all know that it's open. It's done. Yeah. And then really a big shout out to Tatro Construction and 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 Joan and everyone else in the town office and, and the road town. crew and their support and the town crew. And the town's people who put up with the inconvenience and thank you everybody. But really those guys they worked hard to get it done and it's yeah. it's astounding that they made that deadline. Really. Yes, it is. Thank you, Tatro, if you're watching. <laughs> they're not. Yeah, they're not. <laughs> yeah she's got it. Um, I don't have Jones. There we go. Okay. Um, Tatro Construction completed the project by the end of day, October 11th. And it's kind of like midday-ish, but we actually opened it at 8 o'clock that night. This is a great accomplishment on the part of many people. Tatro Project Manager Cody Marsh and his crew but she had a wonderful core of people that I got to know as well. Um, and the VTRAN staff from Municipal Assistance Bureau and District 4, engineering firm Du Bois and King, along with many of us from Rochester, thanks goes to all of them. And thank you to the four landowners who agreed to uh, sell easements to the properties so that the town was able to put in the drainage system that they could that they needed to. Um, also to everybody that had dump trucks going by, which is about you know half of the town um, between Route 73 and the quarry for all the noise and the dust. Thank you all for what you put up with. Um, it was hectic. It could have taken two years and been not quite as intrusive but um, we chose the fast path and our tax dollars directly are not spent on this. It was 100% funded by the Federal Highway Department. Yeah. So we achieved what our, what our wish was and we only had you know, a, a very few moments of, oh my God, you know, it might not happen, but generally everyone went in the right direction and um, was very cooperative and everybody uh, did what they needed to do. How expensive was the project? 
<laughs> Lots of paperwork still lies ahead, um, and um, still bills and funding, and the you know trust still has to settle. So we're not exactly sure, um, but we're not over budget. Um, we have yet to see how much under budget or at budget we would be, but I don't anticipate Which that we would be over budget. Around three million. Yeah. For the entire from the entire section of Rochester to the town line. Yeah. Um, site two, as far as Joan knows, when she typed this, Hutchins completed the work contacted with VTrans, and uh, they were also done by the end of the day on Friday. Um, we were able to get, at our last meeting, we were talking about culverts that we weren't sure were going to be done this year, and they were done. Um, and so it just, you know, love it when a plan comes together. If you want to talk about the 18, it was, uh, it was actually pretty hectic up there, and things were just boom, 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 falling into place. It was an important time for Cooter to be touching base, so um, thank you for all of your requests, assistance, and comments, because there was a lot of information flying in a lot of different areas, and, and Cooter was the was the, the anchor of it all. Um, we are applying for a Better Roads grant um, that they will that we will use to replace and upsize the Rogers Brook culvert next year. So there is still one that yet to be done. Excuse me, I didn't quite hear. Rogers Road Grant? Um, yeah, Rogers Brook, not Rogers, Rogers Brook. Road, Rogers Brook. Um, FEMA continues. Uh, FEMA is a different organization than the Federal Highway Department, and um, they they move at almost a snail's pace, but it's it's moving along, and the paperwork continues on that. <laughs> Town Garage Project, the status is in flux. Um, they have been unable to find a contractor to pick up this project and get it done um, on budget and close to the deadline. So there's a possibility the end of the year project deadline can be extended. If that happens, we may want to try to bring in some other funding to do more work we'd like to do at the, at the town garage, rather than breaking the project into two phases. The second phase is doing something to contain the winter sand. Um, the whole point of the project down there is to keep the river water clean. And so uh, looking at the winter sand, which of course has salt in it, um, they, the, the state would love, to, the Clean Water Act would love to see us have that. Um, but right now, Joan says it's a moving target. So we'll see you know, which, which ball drops first. West Hill Bridge design, we need to get the design RFP out this fall. I'm getting help with that from VTrans Bridge Engineer. Um, that's the small bridge at the bottom of West Hill Road in Rochester. And um, it actually is being mostly funded for by the Forest Service uh, so that they can start their logging project, their Robinson logging project. And they need to update that bridge. So we will kind of be gifted a bridge because they want to do some logging. So that'll please the people up on that road. And that is it. Thank you, Joan. Thank Cooter, you, Joan. Do you have anything to add to that from the highway world? No, no. not really to that. Not really to that. We're still working in bingo, mm -hmm. and Winter Sand is going to start arriving Monday if all goes well. And when that happens, that project, that is, project is yeah. DOA for this year. I see they did deliver some components for that project down there, right? Yes. So I guess they could. We had them placed appropriately. Yeah. All right. Where I can plow by them. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else on road-wise you want to talk about? So this will um, look. Yeah. I have a request. Yeah. Um, coming down the right hand side of Brook Street, if you're driving on the right hand side, there's four or five spots that need to be patched. Otherwise, to avoid the holes, you're driving down the left hand side of the road, which is oncoming you're, traffic. You're talking you about the asphalt. Yeah. <laughs> the asphalt. 
hear about. You talk, are you talking about down the hill? Yeah. If all works well, they and we will the have some down. hot mix Friday. Wonderful. Yeah. I don't guarantee you on that because things sometimes don't go as planned. I know. So if I say within the next week? Only Sunday through Monday. <laughs> So Just so that everybody's aware, there are holes on yes, that right hand side. Yeah. <clears throat> We're aware of it. Thank yeah. you. And so I guess we could um, um, transition on to um, Jock. You wanted to talk some about the, the improvements that need to be done uh, on a class four road for the swine uh, yeah, trail. It's, it's Richard. The other job. The other job. Yeah. <laughs> Get into it. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're possibly going up on Swans Mill on Wing Farm Road at the end this year uh, for this winter. Um, it's Class 4 Road. Um, some pretty rough spots. We're going to have to uh, probably add material. I don't believe there's any spots for culverts. I could have probably could tell you better on that. Uh, <laughs> the water runs from the top to the bottom, right there now. Um, and there's some ledges in the in the road, so there's going to be material going around. Uh, yeah, because it's pretty steep, and uh, there'll be some brush cuts so trucks can get in there. Yeah, and they'll need to be able to plow that. Yes, it's a winter there. job, so yeah. it's got to be uh, done so that um, it can be plowed. So what we'll do is, is work up a, a road work agreement um, so we have to clear what you know what you plan on doing and such and so have it on yeah. for doing work on a town class four road. So uh, okay. like we'll add on other places. So we'll, um, when did you wanna start working on that? Um well we just wanna do it before it gets too cold. Um yeah. so that the uh, we'll see you then later. <laughs> <laughs> is it a one-year project? Uh, no. no. Many years. Many years. Many years. It's this part of the Robinson project? Yeah. Uh, no. No? Different okay. sale. Private. I know it's government, but okay. that's a yep. different sale. Than okay. Robinson. Not Robinson. Okay. So it's you call it a multi-year project? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And the it's name of the road is Swans Mill Road? We can hear it. It's the end of Swan Road. All right, so we'll um, work up an agreement and, and get, get you um, oriented and start doing that. Okay. Thanks for coming tonight right. to talk Thank about you. it. Okay. Thank you. Terry, you got anything? I saw you um, leading a septic truck down behind the school today. Was that you? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's just routine. Routine maintenance, yeah. I don't hear them, two of them down there. It's just a routine pumping. Yeah. I have a question for you. How's the latest testing going with the... Uh, Great, since I put the new pump end on. The new pump is it? No, yeah, I know that, but what about the... Uh, what is it, the... Uh, PFOAs? PFOAs, pacifying yeah. colors. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. And we're one of the 45 towns of, that have passed one of the 45 towns that have taken it, nobody's failed. And there's 600 total. that have got to be done by the end of the year. Okay, good. So we're all set. Good. So we won't have to deal with it for at least three years. Maybe longer. Thank you. Yeah. But, um, you talked a little bit about the library, but anything else you want to mention? Yeah, our trustees meeting is tomorrow at 6 o'clock. And there are a couple of programs in between, but uh, on Thursday, the 24th, there's a discussion and reading uh, from Wendell Berry's book, Another Turn of the Crank. And that certainly has things to do with climate change and the town improvements and that sort of thing. So it should be a good, a good discussion also. And that is when? The 24th. At, at, at 7 o'clock. At the library. At the library. library. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Wendell Berry? Wendell Berry. Thank you. The discussion will be led by someone else, but it's his book. Is it Berry? Yeah. Like the Berry or B A R? Uh, B E R. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
so the other um, new business topic of roadside mowing was that what you wanted to talk about, Marv, or is that something something different? No, I think it was a letter. That was a letter. Okay, that's what I thought. All right, and that comes on to Harlan. You had something you wanted to contribute? About yeah. I uh, since the last meeting, I spent a couple hours down in the basement down here. Yeah. And I went through box by box, just checking the contents of what was on the outside of the box. And there are no books down there. Interestingly enough, I found a bunch of uh, AOT maps dating from 1940 to, I think, don't quote me on dates, to about 2003 showing the road in question as a primitive, untraveled road. Mm -hmm. And they were kind of stashed in this old, broken map bureau, or file, I guess you would call it. Yeah. So that was kind of interesting. <clears throat> All right. Thank you for taking the time to dig into that. Have you uh, come up with anything on no. your side? Uh, I have not. No. Has anybody spent any time? You have. I, was glad yeah, I have, yeah. 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 No. Are there I any have. other places that you might think to look? <coughs> have you given it any thought? I've given a little yeah. thought. Yeah. I've been thought that, that I was happy that you might be down there digging in there since it's a big concern of yours. Yeah. 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 Some thoughts. <laughs> yeah. Did you say, Tom? Is that the lawyers certainly had uh, some thoughts about that. About what? About looking in other places. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did they? As far as, as far as we know, they they've uh, searched every place that they, they they've run that bunny trail as far as they could. So yeah, I don't know. Well, you thought it was kind of interesting. Now all those matters are stuff down here. I don't know what you know. But, All right. Hey, you know, shit happens. All right. Well, thank you for spending the time digging in there. Yeah, if you got any other places that you'd like me to look, let me know. All right. Okay. Um, Tom, you wanted to report about the oh, um, we'll just sale of the constables. Just to make it public. Yeah. Um, you know, we're dispositioning the old constable assets we no longer have a constable and one of those assets is the uh, vehicle and we've had an offer by the Orange County Sheriff to buy that vehicle so and we just want to make that public as to what we're doing what we intend on doing Orange County? Yes how does it work out financially, uh, hiring a sheriff to come in as opposed to having a constable in town? Well, I think right now it's, occasionally. Like, it's about the same because we have the budget that's about the same. Right. Yes. We stayed within the budget that yeah, was already set. Staying yeah. within a yeah, set budget, so we're adjusting it to, to make it so it's not more expensive. But I don't think it's much, it's not less expensive either. It's just. But did we get more coverage? With our own constable, we're only getting there about two days a week now. Yeah, right now. Yeah, if you've got a problem in town, there's right. nobody you can call. If you've got a problem, there's nobody you can call no, you unless call, you, somebody gets call shot. Call and you can call the state police. Yeah, you always call the state police. Yeah. Yeah. Always call the state police if there's an issue. Yeah, like that. but yeah. nine times out of ten, dude, yeah. they're too busy, or you know. But that's who you call. They don't before. respond. Yeah, that's um. If you I'm just wondering about, you know, the efficiency of uh, that as compared to having a constable. At least when Tommy was in town, you could call him and, you know. Well, you can call the state, you can call the sheriff. If they're in the area, they will respond. Yeah, if they're in the area. Right. But well, Tommy was in the area all the time. And no. right. a lot of times, no, I don't know where he comes out. No, he was, he, was, no. he was on the Randolph Police Department. No, he here. was here 20 hours a week. Yeah, we, I think, our last constable was part-time, and the one before yeah. that was part-time. Yeah. So in terms of how it's going to work out financially, once some time goes by, we'll be able to see what the, you know, how it balances out, whether they're um, running more We get the same bank for a buck, time-wise. 
well, if we get the same bang we're, for our buck. We're willing line. to give it six months to a year of taking and then look back yeah. on it and see okay. what the results yeah. are. Yeah. We've only yeah, had three months, so. Okay. We got a little I less time. Jury, jury this off. wasn't thought of before. Sure. Uh, yes, it was. Or? No, of no, course I've thought was. about this for a year. Yeah, a long yeah. time. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So how long is the contract with the sheriff's department? Do we have right now? It's a year. It's an annual, annual contract. It's an annual contract, yeah. yeah. And then as and when we evaluate the budget, if it turns out that it's more or less efficient, if it's more efficient, if he's bringing in some income, then we could afford to bring them bring in for in more shifts. Shift. We always have that That's option. That's what we're hoping for. Right. And, yeah. Yeah. and there's also a savings, of course, in infrastructure. We don't have to maintain a vehicle anymore. We don't buy tasers. We don't have to supply a constable with equipment. Right. So the savings there. So well. in your financial Training. projections, you see this is a better deal. Yeah. I think we're getting good well, I mean, You did do financial projections, right? Yes. Yeah. Nancy, did you have a comment? Well, I think we have to um, understand also that you're required to have certified constables today. You just can't go get somebody off the street to become a constable. Um, the law requires that the individual be certified. So when Mark left, he was certified, but we were going to have problems after yeah, that. Not, yeah, to have a, a, like a law enforcement yeah. constable. You can have a constable entitled to satisfy. Who's an animal control right. officer, essentially. Martha? I just want to make sure I heard Tom correctly about the constable vehicle. Did you say you had sold it to Orange County? We um, haven't sold it yet, but the, the sale is pending. OK, the sale's pending. Thank I you. I wanted to make it public before we proceed. Better do it quick. Well, you're right. Yeah, sort of the matter. It's got some issues, but they're willing to take it as is. Um, we also have a, a application for a driveway construction, but it's incomplete and doesn't have really a description of what's going to be done, and, the, and it was also not warned on the, the agenda, so we okay. can't take action on it for a couple reasons. So I'll um, reach out to him and. and uh, ask for more information and okay. we maybe put that on the agenda next time. Yeah. Get with Cooter. I mean, he doesn't even say exactly where the driveway is, so there's nothing to do about it. Yeah. So uh, I think that is pretty much covers the agenda. Um, thank you all for coming out on this uh, holiday evening. and. Thank you for having us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes.